Hello and welcome uh, to Showcase Friday here on Unmatched Value. Uh, today I have an interesting product for you, it's called the phone book. I uh, backed this on Kickstarter about nine months ago. And I mean they said it was because of the corona and their factory had to be shut down so they're late but it's here so which is better than some of the other similar products that have been on Kickstarter in the past. So I'm happy that it's at least here and it's decent. <laughs> so anyways, uh, this is how the product arrives. It's a pretty nice packaging. Um, it has a 15.6 inch IPS display, uh, 1080p in its touchscreen, and uh, a 4,800 milliamp battery. That's just some of the basic specs on it. Yeah, it comes in this little sleeve. It comes with a little phone stand and a manual, which is pretty useless. It just basically goes over the ports. And then a charging cable, which honestly, in my opinion, is very short. That's that's not enough for normal use. Anyways, um, so enough about that. Anyway, so this is what it looks like. Uh... It's, it's decent. This is aluminum. The bottom is plastic. It's got the battery in here. So, basically what this is, is it's a phone-powered laptop. It takes the processing power of your phone and puts it into the convenience, big screen, keyboard of a laptop. So, there is several other manufacturers that make similar products. So this is this video, I don't even know if I can recommend this particular one. Or if you should wait, or I'll go into that a little bit more later. But basically, this is one of the best ones right now. There is a NextDoc 2. I think it costs a little bit more. And I've heard it's got issues too. So let's uh, take a look at the actual product in use. The colors are not bad. It's full 1080p, like I think I mentioned before. It's touchscreen. But uh, the issue with it is, I mean, they're a little washed out. Not not too horrible, but it's just not as vivid as you'd probably be used to seeing displays. It's, it's not bad. I can't, you know, complain about it. Uh, my complaint with mine is the HDMI completely doesn't work. I tried different cables, I tried to plug it in when it was off, plug it in when it was on, it just plug it into my phone, my computer, nothing, it just glitches and it won't turn on. That's not a big deal because it works with the app they provide, which is mainly what I would be using it with, what anybody would be using it with. My issue is I couldn't test it with Samsung DeX, which is what I wanted to do. So basically... Uh, they don't provide a USB cable, so I just use my own. I'm using the magnetic ones. It works fine. Uh, there's a plug right here where the USB cable is supposed to go. Plug it in like that. Go back up. Um, take your phone, connect. Turn on your Bluetooth. And it'll, it'll connect to your Bluetooth. Then it says open the app, which I'm assuming you've downloaded by this point. <laughs> uh, app is running. And then it'll ask you to start screen capturing. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. So you just do start now. And there you go, it's mirroring my screen. Um, you can plug in a mouse over here on this side. There's another USB port. Um, the mouse is a little bit laggy. I can't, like, I can't say it's horrible, but it, it does lag a little bit. Okay, so, you see the mouse on there? So, when I move it, it's not bad. Anyways, um, so this is their app display main screen you can add the apps you want to use through through them here I added a couple games just to check it out okay so now there we go yeah so the touch screen works pretty decently I can't really complain 
my main issue, as I was saying before, <laughs> aside from the HDMI not working, is this mouse pad. It's huge. What happens is when you type, your hand rests on it. So you can't really type without activating it. It's uncomfortable to hold your hand like this all the time. So that just bugs me to no end, to be honest. Um, I, I don't really do mobile gaming, to be honest with you. So I kind of just downloaded this to show you guys what it looks like, how it works. Um, yeah, so I don't know how well you can see the graphics of that. It, it's decent. Can't like, can't complain. It looks, I mean, it's a little crappier than on the phone. But it's also a bigger screen, so that's kind of to be expected. But it's full HD, so that's not bad. So here, if we go to controls, this this is the main benefit of this phone book. Customize. So yeah, basically, I honestly wouldn't recommend it for anybody that wasn't uh, planning to do gaming. Aside, I uh, maybe browsing. I guess you'd be okay if you just want a bigger screen to you know browse online, watch videos. That's that's acceptable too. Oh, and one more thing, the speakers on Android they won't work because uh, apparently Android can't um, send the sound through the USB-C port, so you, the sound is going to be coming from your phone. Anyway, so here's the settings for the game. And here's what the main benefit of uh, this phone book is. So you can do a button mapper. And then so what you can do is you can... It takes a little bit, so like three seconds. And then it'll detach like this. And you can drag it over the controls. So you can use the keys to move your character around. So you go confirm, and, and then like what you can do is you can take a button, drag it out here to say reload, then then map it with an R, and then you just click confirm, and then whenever you click R, it's going to activate that button on the screen. So you can basically play mobile games with a keyboard, which is going to give you a huge edge over the competition. Yeah, so as you can see, it's a decent product for what it is, being a first gen. Uh, yeah, I just really wanted to bring it to your guys' attention that these kind of products exist, so you can keep an eye out for maybe there's going to be a good one later on, maybe this is actually something you need right now, and you don't mind the little setbacks that this offers or the little issues with it. So yeah, anyways, uh, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next Friday. Have a great day.